hey guys show sure in here and i'm back with another tutorial this is the first episode of behind the music with yours truly Sherwin. um remember to like comment share subscribe to this channel for more content such as these so we're gonna jump into mixing how to mix beats how to mix a dancehall beat learning this will help you to mix even vocals because i treat sounds just as how i treat vocals um it's all about compression controlling and all that so we're gonna jump into how to mix a dancehall beat today um i'm gonna play a, a section of the, the track and then we jump right into the the, the um the mental you know the process of how um, i achieve the sound that i achieve so let's go let's play let's play this <laughs> that's enough I believe so we're gonna go into the process of how I create you see whenever I'm uh, make, creating a rhythm I'm mixing at the same time you know what I mean because the first step when it comes on to to mixing is creating a decent balance so while I'm creating the sounds I'm turning down sounds I'm turning up sounds you know what I mean balance is important you have to create a decent balance you know you don't want everything um, clashing um, in your in your mix you want everything to be subtle calm so when mastering is added to the track you know everything will come out cohesively so you want to create a f um, firstly a decent balance between the instrument and you want to leave a lot of headroom you don't want everything trying to bubble over you know what I mean so the first thing one need to do is to create a good balance and balance is not only with gain you know what i mean you you need balance when it comes on to the stereo feel of things so in this track i have a few things pan to the left a few things pan to the right here you can see a few things pan to the left um another one pan to the right um but it's not only here on the mixing rack i do panning you know I do panning from from the um, while creating the beat as I said and likewise in some different regards I'm just gonna highlight that for per for this purpose I'm gonna go to piano roll with the banjo and you know you're gonna go down your control and you look at note pan you can see that I do some panning with the banjo I'm gonna play the banjo So we have the sounds that um, pan in in that regards likewise, so because you want everything to be in its respectful area, you know, I mean, its rightful place in the stereo field. You don't want everything to pack up one side, you know. You want to create a cohesiveness in the stereo field, balance everything in the stereo field. So you're not hearing too much of the rhythm in the left side of the headphone, if you're using a headphone. You want everything to be leveled out. So I put instru some instrument left, right, and I will pan some to the left, pan some to the right to create that cohesiveness. Um, so that and that that falls under balancing. Likewise, not only that, um, we we move from balancing, and I believe this is an aspect of balancing. But we move from that to add um, plugins to the sound to create uh, more balance. You know. Um, within the stereo field within the spectrum of frequency and all that because the next thing I do is to is to cut instrument you know I would start to mix my drums first I'm gonna just play the drums the drums
so what I do is cut the drum so I know that the kick carries um, the basic frequency so we cut out the higher note of the the, um, the, the kick so the the, the, the musical um, instruments the, the lead the ayats can have room there so we cut of all of the high frequency about 500 hertz we bring it to so all that softer lighter instruments within the 5k the 1k the 2k the 10k may have that space to utilize and i believe it's a part of balancing likewise we're creating a balance between instruments um and then again with where we are um stereophil is concerned i always merge the the, the um stereo of this i put it in mono because you want the kicks to be in mono the snare likewise i want it to it in mono i want my ayats in this rhythm to be in mono um you can it's not a hard and fast rule because some of my instrument as if you listen to my channel it's rhythm on my channel or songs that i produce you will hear the ins the ayats sometimes running from left to right and i have plugins that i used to do that and sometimes i manually do it you know what i mean so for this instrument I want the IAT to just play dead center. I don't want it to have no form of stereoness to it. So I want it to be mono. So I merge it right here with this with, with this knob right here. Um and vice versa, like for this instrument, I cut out all that bass frequency so the bass can have more, it don't sound muddy, you know. I, I boost a few frequencies that I want to pop um, you know, in the mix and for like the melodies i would cut out the bass frequency so that the bass could have its space and boost a few frequency to, to um enhance the sound that i'm that i'm currently using so the f remember balancing where gain is concerned second thing put everything in its per in in perspective in the stereo field create that balance in the stereo field Put in some instrument on the left, some instrument on the right, and create a balance, that cohesiveness. And then you cut frequency, cut frequency, cut frequency, so other frequency can pass through and sound um, beautiful and well pronounced in your mix. The next thing I move on to after cutting frequ frequency, I move on to controlling them, um, which is where limiter comes in. Um, you put in the um, the compression on it you know controlling the sound you don't want the sound jumping out in the mix so you want to control it with um any for any compressor you have i want to use this one because it's really um colorful and it shows me what 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 it's doing so here it is you know i can see how the compressor is is um, re, um, is dealing with my sound, so I like this compressor a lot. It's the um, fruity limiter. It's a very good compressor, so I use it to control um, some of the sounds. Then, so after carving them, I control them. You know, tame them. Don't cut. Don't. I don't want them all over the place. So I tame them with the limiter. With the, with the um, with the uh, the fruity limiter as you can see right here and like some instruments i would have like other like uh, on this i would have uh, the mondo mod stereo you know doing a, a fast um panning left right left right left right and it's on a, a, a effect um, it's a percussion effect in the in the in the, in the um in the in the in the track um what i want to make mention of sometimes i don't use the eq you know like a plugin i will use down here because there's an equalizer down here you can manipulate it likewise to save you from running out of cpu space so that's good to note um so after creating a good balance putting everything in the stereo field right your hand cutting frequency and then controlling frequency the next thing i do now is to polish the frequency and cause them to be more pronounced in the mix so with that i 
create bus. And the reason why I create a bus is because of CPU space. Like when you can't take the um each the plugins on that bus and put it on every um for instance the drum. To take the VMR and the RVOX and place it on all the, the, the drum, it it it's gonna take up a lot of CPU space and it may, you may not even get to finish the beat because it might the program might crash. So you create a bus to save CPU space, or aux, or auxiliary, or a send. Um, and I send all my, my, my drums to this particular bus. It's a drum bus. So if you notice, this is, is connected to this. This is connected to it. This, this. All of them is connected to this, the drum bus, the ayats, everything is connected. Every instrument that have drum in it, that consists of drum, it's connected to my drum bus. And on my drum bus, I have a, a VMR doing some harmonic distortion, um, a FG401 compressor, and a little bit of EQ doing you know, a little brightening here and there where the drum is concerned. Um, and I then beef it up with a Arvox with eight, negative 8.5 compression and a negative 2 gain compression. Sometimes we bring this to 9, sometimes 7, depend, sometimes 8, depending on you know what, I mean, what sounds good because you know that some instruments are light and you might want that extra boost in your, your track. Um, for the kick, I, wouldn't, I didn't route it to the river because I don't want my kick to have any reverb nor any delay. But instrument like this, this percussion, I have it routed, which is a drum. I consider it to be a part of the drum, the percussion. So I wrote it to the drum bus and I gave it some reverb to give it its own identity in the mix and gave it likewise some, some delay. On my reverb, I have a fruity reverb too and I did some cutting and um, where the wetness is concerned, I did some wet. I manipulated the wetness of it and that's it and then I brought it to the delay bus which I was the H delay the Q4 stereo EQ cutting out the low frequency and I use a stereo imager to push those delay far out on the left and right so it's not in in the in the um because of the the drum is is center already, we want to hear the drum also. You know what I mean, F spread out. You know what I mean. So so I use the S one imager to create some character with some of the the, the, the drum sounds in the far spectrum of the stereo field, left right panning and all them thing there. So like this, it you hear it. So you will hear it. Got that up because I already panicked in the in the um, when I was creating. I already panicked already, so it it left right and the dead center. When it dead center, it still sound as if um, it's panned, but it, it it give you a more it give you a more forward sound, but it still has that that character to it as if it's still panned, you know, because of the delay. You know, and the, this the, this S one imager forced the sound, you know, out on the far end of the speaker, so it doesn't interrupt nothing in the mid or in the dead center. It plays that character um, on the outskirt of things. Um, so after creating the bus, those are my three main bus. I will create other bus, but that. That's more than like if I, um, for like if I am working with sample and so forth, I will create other bus to 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 do other effects. But these are my three main bus: a drum, a reverb, and a delay. In all of my rhythms, um, and the next step is what? Next step is to just listen and listen attentively, and make final adjustment after doing all that you need to do you d to do and uh, let me say this when it comes down to pattern you have to know your this is a part of mixing or you patternize everything 
you notice with my instrument it, it start off with a few instruments it doesn't start off with everything you know um, and then it builds up into the chorus and then here I did some more mixing again by cutting sound <laughs> And I put also a filter on it. So when the when the beat starts, I think it starts with the filtering. No, it doesn't start. It starts. It starts and then go into a filter. So that's a part of mixing. Um, for bass, I put cut again. Um, put a VMR. Put some revival, a British um, FGN, and a trimmer and an R box but this time mono because it's bass so you want it mono and that's basically it and then you're going to mastering you know, mastering the beat I will do a different tutorial on, on mastering the beat I don't want to fully up with too much so thanks for watching if there's any question you want to go more in depth you can leave that in the comment section remember to like share subscribe you know for more awesome content and this is just the first episode of behind the music with yours truly Sherwin. Remember to go and check out my YouTube Vivo channel which is Sherwin Vivo and listen to the, the music on it, you know what I mean? And I really appreciate every person who have subscribed to this channel and likewise to my Vivo. Really appreciate it. Um look out for more behind the music, you know, because we have some more videos to more tutorials to do of behind the music, how I mix this song, how I made that particular rhythm. You know what I mean? And just feel free to leave any comment, you know what I mean, you want in the um, the comment section because I will be doing Q&A likewise. So bless up, you know what I mean? God bless you all. And just stay safe, keep on creating, and remember the sky is the limit. Remember again, visit Sherry and Vivo, like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much. My music is also on all platforms, so feel free to go and check it out. Spotify, Deezer. Apple, you know, you name it, it's there. So, bless up and thanks for tuning in.